We are all obsessed with trying to grow our natural hair. Why is 4C only considered bad and ugly and unkept and unprofessional when it's short hair? And we always know that they're going to pick the 40 inch bust down with a middle part over the short 4C TWA. Shrinkage is the devil. We tend to be more willing to praise natural hair when it is longer versus when it is shorter because I think as soon as we start to abandon the care that we have about what others think of our hair, that will make our natural hair as powerful as ever. Hey guys, what is up? It is Cam. Welcome, welcome back to my channel! <laughs> So in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be talking about natural hair yet again. But this time, I'm going to switch it up a little bit because I've gotten a lot of critiques from my last video and the other video that I made about natural hair a little bit earlier this year of some key points and some key things that I did not talk about that are just as important to the conversation as all the other things we talked about, such as texturism and curl pattern, diversity and inclusion, wigs and weaves, relaxers, and things like that. And also, because of this recent controversy, I don't even know whether to call it controversy, drama, mess, child, hot mess. I don't know really what to call it. It's actually quite tragic and devastating, but everything that has been happening over on TikTok and Twitter with the TikTok creator lip gloss, heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. And I just felt like because I have made a couple of videos about natural hair already on my channel, I just felt like I should address it because not only does it relate heavily to what I've already been talking about, but it also opens up the floor for me to continue the conversation and to add in things that I may have forgot or left out in the first place. So today we are going to be talking about natural hair texturism and our obsession with hair lengths and before we get into it if you have not already go ahead give this video a thumbs up comment down below one of your favorite things about natural hair one of the things that you hate about natural hair I want to hear your opinions about natural hair also if you have not already and you like my content and you want to see more of my content make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you never miss another one of my uploads also you can follow my second channel no you can subscribe to my second channel that's where I post all of my girly content, my lifestyle content, hair content, vlogs, things like that. And if you want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on all my other social media. Everything will be on the screen and down below. And without further ado, let's get into it. So, like I said in the introduction, I was inspired to make this video because of everything that has been happening recently with the TikTok creator Lip Gloss. I'm pretty sure she also has a YouTube channel, but this controversy, this uproar, this, I don't know, gaslighting started on TikTok. And it started with a TikTok that she made about trying to wear her hair and learn to to love her hair in its natural, shrunken, untouched state. So I want to play the TikTok for you guys, and I'm going to watch it along with you just so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about and that you have a better idea going into the rest of this video. Hey y'all, so I'm trying to learn how to wear my natural hair untouched. This is how it looked when I woke up. Y'all was talking about all type of moisturizing, gel, this, is that. I have product in my hair, dupe. Hair is very moisturized. This is just how the hair look. That's what I don't want to run from anymore. It's what the hair want to do, so I have to let it do what it want to do. I want to learn to wear it completely shrunk. I don't want to stretch it. The hair is not meant to be long, will never be long. And it's time society came to terms with that. How you gonna tell me how I was born is ugly? Like, stop playing with me. Anyway, it's a struggle, bitch. I'm, I'm struggling. You gonna see, bitch. Shape like, I'm struggling to uh, accept how it looks so Why bad. Is it shaped like that from the side? I don't <laughs> Anyway, I put this outfit on. Let me tell you right now, I can only pull white boys with this hair. But I'm not mad, to be honest. Anyways, this is the back. The back was eating, bitch. Lotion on the stomach just to help me out a little bit more. Yeah, bitch, it's hard as to do this, but I'm just gonna try, you know what I mean? I'm just gonna try. Not only did she post that initial video, but she has so many other videos on her account. It's basically like a series. And so she's been doing this for multiple days. I'm gonna show you if you can see, like she's been doing this thing for multiple days. And I think there was even a point in which her main account, the lip gloss account was banned from TikTok because of how many people reported her. And she had to go to her other account to continue posting updates and other things like that. One of the main reasons why I wanted to get into this and talk about this is because like I mentioned before I feel like I have not done this part of the conversation enough justice whenever it comes to talking about natural hair and the obsession with length because I feel like I have touched on why we're obsessed with wigs and weaves I feel like I've touched on texturism quite a bit whenever I have this conversation but I think one key factor that I've always been missing whenever I make videos about natural hair and doing commentary about natural hair is the fact that we tend to be more willing to praise natural hair when it is 
longer versus when it is shorter and I think not only is lip glosses situation a key point like a key point is being made there in that argument but I also feel like we can see this across the natural hair community we can see this across the entire span of the natural hair movement back from the modern version of it back in like 2013 2012 2014 and even back when it first started before probably I was even born but I think inherently there is this obsession with length more than anything and I think because we have an obsession with length that plays into texturism a lot and that plays into the other qualities that can make one natural hair type more preferable or seemingly better than another in the eyes of society and so not only do I think in the grand scheme of things it's incredibly important to push a message that no matter what your hair type is no matter what your curl pattern is no matter what the strand width is the density the porosity whatever the case may be I think an emphasis should be placed on learning to love your natural hair as it grows naturally out of your scalp because at the end of the day that like in its shrunken state in its natural untouched state is your natural hair all of these other things that we're doing to our hair are just different forms of manipulation and it's basically like natural hair in bold font natural hair in italics font it's basically just ways to enhance this hair but I think when we're talking about loving our natural hair and figuring out how to work with our natural hair like we have to get back to the basics and the root of everything and learn how to love it when it is in that shrunken state when it is in that untouched state because I think if we can't ourselves learn to love what our hair looks like when it is the most natural when it is the most untouched then how could we ever expect anyone else to find us attractive if we can't find that attractiveness within ourselves hey y'all it's day three wearing my natural hair fully shrunken so let me tell you how I've been feeling I do feel like other people find me less attractive but I really had to think when these lame just choose to only uplift black girls in wigs and makeup they really are doing a disservice they don't care about your well-being they don't care about what that's going to do to your self-confidence what that's going to do to your edges what that's going to do to you as a person and it's time for me to let those type of people go and find people who truly like me you know my real true self i cannot believe how hard they make it in society as a black girl to just like your regular self you know the whites is getting up splashing water on their face and leaving the house god forbid a black girl do the same thing i've had a few comments saying i look like so and so grown ass woman i guess all black girls look like grown women then because that's what you look like if i take them braids and the makeup twin anyways make sure you're not dragging people down with your insecurity and i hope more people do this because the more black girls to do it the more easy it's gonna be you know what i mean and so that was a very very long winded explanation or way for me to say that i like the message that she's pushing and i like what she's doing making the series about learning learning how to love her natural hair in its untouched shrunken state and actually going through and clarifying and saying you know I did put product I did do this I did do that and I'm gonna let my hair do what it wants to do and I'm not gonna force it to do anything that it does not want to do because I do know that I included a clip from her TikTok account in my last video where she was talking about laying her edges I feel the exact same way I don't lay my edges unless I really want to probably like five times a year if we're being honest but that's just because I feel like sometimes as black girls as black women we are pressured to look a certain way and there is a certain standard for us whenever it comes to being kept up looking presentable and actually being done and I feel like laying edges has become a part of that but I also feel like there are other factors that play into that as well regardless of whether your edges are laid or not y'all I want to start wearing my hair fully shrunk like this so bad but it's so hard it's like I don't have a problem let me tell you something I really don't care about how I look I really care I, I really like to be treated like I'm important and when you know when you have the natural hair out they just people just treat you like you know dirt and I don't really like to be treated like that like it hurts my feelings y'all know what I mean like and don't tell me wear it if you can't wear your natural hair bitch. I don't I don't take advice from people who don't practice what they preach but yeah if all the black girls were shrunk at the same time it'd be easier but you don't ever want to move at the same time like this shit is so fucking hard <laughs> And part of embracing natural hair, at least to me, is learning to embrace it in all stages and form. And not necessarily hiding behind a TWA that can be stretched with a blow dryer in order to increase its hang time. To admire your hair in its natural state as it grows from your head and calling that enough. Because it is enough. Because no other race of women has to jump through this many hoops in order to be considered and perceived as being attractive. And there certainly is a reason for that. Like, can't we just stand up against it and say no and decide that today is the day 
that we're going to learn to embrace our beauty as we naturally are, including our hair. Like, I feel like at this point, we literally could just say no. And what about it? We could say no more. And who's going to say something? And if they do say something, why do we care? Because I think as soon as we start to abandon the care that we have about what others think of our hair, that goes for black men, white men, white women, and even black women. That will make our natural hair as powerful as ever. Our routines would simplify, maintenance would be lower, and our overall attitudes towards our hair would completely change. And I think that's the truth. After Lip Gloss's video was posted initially and started gaining a lot of traction, there were a lot of black girls and a lot of black women on the TikTok app reposting it, stitching it, using the sound in order to also showcase their own natural hair, basically trying to promote the same message. They're wanting to learn how to love their hair in its natural, shrunken, untouched state. I think that is golden. I literally think that is the whole point or probably was the core point of the natural hair movement to begin with, but I think it happening now is really important. But I do want to touch on something that really made me upset in this situation because I feel like black women are always gaslit whenever it comes to our hair. We are always gaslit whenever it comes to our experience, our perspective, what we have been through. And people love to tell us that we're exaggerating, that what we are saying we've been through is not actually what we've been through. And the same thing happened to lip gloss in this case whenever it came to her hair because she made a very distinct comment about her natural hair towards the end of that initial video. She said she can only pull white boys with the hair. And you want to know what is crazy about that statement that she made? There were black men in her comment section taking that sentence, running with it, and using it to justify their hatred. I don't know if that's too strong of a word, but they're using it to justify their disdain towards black women and using that statement to gaslight lip gloss specifically and other black women about their experience trying to embrace and wear their natural hair in a climate where most men prefer wigs and weaves, looser textured hair, long hair, and things of the like. And I think in one particular instance, not only was she being bullied, not only was she being harassed, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, her TikTok account was banned because of how many black men, how many people reported her page, but she was facing all types of probably hate speech at this point. It was just a lot. Like it was honestly devastating, heartbreaking, like please get a grip, touch the grass, like go take a dip in the pool, like please be serious. Because I think whenever it comes to black women and their natural hair and perceived attractiveness, the numbers do not lie. The numbers don't lie. The pictures on the internet don't lie. And not only do we see these things, not only are we aware of these things, but we also experience these things firsthand. And I think that is something that lip gloss was trying to say. But for the black men that were using her pictures to create dating profiles of her, please go get a job. Because why are you spending your money creating bait dating profiles of someone else just to prove a point? And on predominantly black dating websites at that, how are you proving a point? Like dating websites are not breeding grounds for hookup culture. I don't, I don't know how that proves the point that black men love natural hair, that black men love short or C natural hair. Because if we look at the numbers, if we look at the numbers, that's not the case. And I think we all know that's not the case, especially when we're considering and we're talking about good hair versus bad hair. We know what good hair means. We know what bad hair means. And we know that bad hair equals short for C. We know that we've been called all different types of names by black men whenever we do wear our 4C hair. And we always know that they're going to pick the 40 inch bust down with a middle part over the short 4C TWA. We know that that's going to happen every single time. What's up y'all? So I'm pretty sure everyone has seen the post of the black girl uh, talking about her hair and talking about, you know, that she could only pull white guys with her hair. Right. So why did this man get on Twitter and tell us that he created a hinge account using this girl's picture to try to do an experiment to show that she can pull niggas? Hello? And then he really starts to break it down piece by piece. How he used her account to pull niggas. And it's just really weird. Uh, so he's used this girl's picture and trying to make his point. Not only is this man unwell um, to go and create a fake dating profile of a girl, but it just shows the way that Massage Noir shows up and how men feel like they need to be in control of black women's bodies, be in control of black women's narratives, even digitally. And the, and this doesn't even take into account the way that this idiot has exposed her to so much violence. Like, you don't even know these men. He said uh, less than 24 hours she's amassed close to 1,500 black men interest. You've exposed her to 1,500 men. And, not, and some of these might be bots. You know, some of these accounts might be bots. But still, you've exposed her to this many men knowing the way that men can be violent towards women and femmes, right? The way that women and femmes can't even reject men without being met with violence behind it. Yeah. So 
I just look at this as like an intentional act of violence. Um, there was no reason to do this. So I just don't understand like, yeah, God can go ahead and end the world because it's just not given. And so I think not only is it wrong of people to take her experience and completely negate it just based off of how they feel and then to go and undermine and gaslight by creating fake dating profiles in order to prove that her experience isn't actually her experience. Not only is it shallow, but I think you're continuing to prove her point and you're doing a disservice to the movement at hand whenever it comes to black girls trying to learn to love the hair. The same hair that grows out of the scalps of black men as well that black men bully us for are the same thing that we're trying to unlearn and relearn to love in order to be able to fully embrace ourselves as black women, as black girls, as our natural selves so that we don't have to continue to unpack generations and generations worth of self-hate that have been ingrained in us for centuries. The one thing that I really like whenever it comes to the natural hair community, and I think I might have mentioned this in my last video, is the fact that it is so diverse. We have so many different hair types, different coil patterns, densities, everything. All of these qualities kind of go into what makes up our specific heads of natural hair so no one person's hair is going to look the same as the next person and I think that is probably one of the most beautiful things about the movement in general is because it has so much difference between person to person to person and so I think when thinking about the last video that I posted in regards to the rise and fall of the natural hair community although I feel like a lot of people are starting to leave and divest the natural hair community because of everything that I mentioned in that video which by the way if you haven't seen that video yet please go and watch it. I will link it in the description box and I'll put it up in the cards so you can see it. But I think this resurgence could provide that positive step or a step in a positive direction for girls that feel lost and stuck and don't know what to do and don't know where to start. Because it can absolutely just start with wearing your hair as it is and seeing how that makes you feel and then finding what works for you and what you like best based off of your personal style, the shape of your face, your eye color, all of that stuff as the days go on and as you move forward. And so let's get into the conversation of black women and their hair because I think there is a large consensus whenever it comes to that specific conversation because of all of the gaslighting that we face on a regular basis from the men that look like us. I think it's important to note that not only are our experiences valid, but our experiences are lived experiences. Like that's literally why they call them experiences because we went through them. And I think not only do they help us to put things into more perspective, but they allow us to be able to learn and and grow from there because I think that whenever it comes to natural hair for me personally I always get compliments I always get compliments from white people when it comes to my natural hair I get a compliment from a white person why because I think I heard a term I can't remember who made a video about this they think it's exotic when they see natural hair it's exotic it's different why because most white people have straight hair and they don't do much with it whereas us black women like I'm pretty sure whenever I go to school by the way I go to PWI I go to school all almost every week with a new hairstyle and every week consistently it's like oh your hair looks so great nice hair even when I go and my hair is not done I'm pretty sure I've gone to school with my hair in clips because I needed to do something really quick and I just used some alligator clips and clipped it up right after getting out of the shower they eat it up every single time eat it up eat it up every single time and I can even say that my hair is not done and they'll say well it looks done to me great but let it be a black man please let it be a black man it's it's nappy real quick it's ghetto real quick it's unkept real quick it's not cute real quick it's everything bad under the sun really Really quick and I think too whenever it comes to black women especially when we have looser textured hair and we are dark skinned they get really confused if we look that way and our hair isn't considered nappy they assume that we're mixed or that we can't be fully black and I think it's a really weird concept to assume that someone can't be fully black or to assume that someone is mixed race just because they have a looser textured hair as if being fully black means that we have to have nappy hair and by nappy hair we all know that I mean 4C. Because this specific story happened to me a few weeks ago. There was a guy that needed help getting gas and putting gas in his car and I was feeling like a great person. I was feeling led by the Holy Spirit to go help this man put some gas in his car. He was a dark skinned black man and as I'm helping him we're doing a little bit of small talk just chatting as the gas is going in the car and he tells me, gives me a compliment on my hair, says my hair is really nice. This particular day I was wearing it in a twist out and it was probably like a day or two or three old. I don't remember but I was wearing a twist out. He complimented 
cuts my hair, I tell him thank you and he asks me if I'm mixed. And personally, it took everything in me to be like, what? Because, I don't know, you guys let me know. Do I look mixed to you? Do I look mixed to you? I don't think I look mixed. I think I look pretty black, but I told him, I was like, no, I'm not mixed. He was like, you sure all black? And I'm like, yeah. As if we have to be mixed in order for our hair to not be nappy. And maybe this is just a testament to the environment that he grew up in. Maybe he's never seen black women of my complexion with my particular hair texture. I'm not really sure of the case, but I feel like this is a discrepancy or this is something that a lot of black women face all the time in our community in general, just based off of what our hair looks like versus what we look like. And to continue to add to this conversation and just round everything out, I wanna go ahead and talk about hair length because that is probably one of the main reasons why I made this video because like I said, I haven't talked about it. And I think that whenever it comes to long hair versus short hair, long hair is going to beat out short hair every time, especially when it comes to 4C. I think we talk about the discrimination that people with 4C face all of the time, but I think there's a difference between having long 4C hair and having short 4C hair, simply based off the fact that long hair is generally considered to be more attractive and to be more feminine. I cannot tell you how many articles I've read about long hair versus short hair, about why people prefer long natural hair versus short natural hair, why is 4C only considered bad and ugly and unkept and unprofessional when it's short. All of these articles point back to this same word, feminine. Long hair is considered to be more feminine. And I made a couple videos, I think maybe one, maybe one or two, I don't know, I don't remember. I made some videos about feminine, ugh, black women and femininity a little bit earlier this year that kind of explore black women and their relationship with femininity. And I think that this is another one that can be added into that conversation simply because black women, not only are they not considered to be as attractive whenever they have their natural hair, but they're considered to be even less attractive if they have their natural hair and it's 4C and it's short. Okay, so the fear when you have your natural hair, especially when it's shrunk like mine, is that, you know, you feel like you're gonna look masculine. So let me put a masculine outfit on and see how I look. Um, so this is what I could come up with. Do I look like a boy? Okay, I don't know if I look like a boy or not, but I do know the fact that I have to chase feminization is ridiculous. I'm a bitch. I mean, I'm a girl. <laughs> Just let me be a girl. Why do I have to outwardly super express that I'm a girl? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's just too much. Because kinky hair is beautiful when it's long. Tightly coiled hair is beautiful when it's long. 4C hair is beautiful when and if only when it's long. And I think we're all aware of that. Because one thing that I came to a relation of when I was planning this video is that the common consensus as a natural hair community, as a movement, as black women, you can ask anybody. I promise you, ask anybody. One thing that we all hate and that we will crap on until the end of time is shrinkage. Shrinkage is the devil. Please look up any anything about shrinkage on the internet, how to stretch your hair, how to do X, Y, Z. I'm even guilty of it. I stretch my hair all the time. Why? Because I don't always like shrinkage. I like to have a little bit of hang time. And I think all of us as a collective, we like to have a little bit of our hang time, especially if we have been in the market of growing our hair. And so one thing that we hate, let's hear it, it's the shrinkage. And why? Because shrinkage hides our length. And why would we be upset with our our length being hidden like that. It's because we all understand that long hair equals attractive, long hair equals feminine, long hair equals better, especially in the eyes of society. So when you look on the internet and you're going to explore the realm of natural hair, one thing that I seem to commonly see, and I myself am guilty of this as well on my second channel, you can literally find a video up there clear as day about how to grow your natural hair. Because I think as a community, we are all obsessed with trying to grow our natural hair. Videos left and right, every single platform that you could ever think of will have some sort of video, will showcase some sort of article on how you can grow your natural hair. What are the best tips and tricks? What are the most effective ways? How can we do it the quickest? A lot of us seem to be obsessed with this thing that we call length because like I said before, we understand that length is considered to be more attractive. And so as black women, we are wanting to grow our hair, especially considering that in the days of relaxers, a lot of us did not understand how to take care of this hair. And so it would only ever be as long as this. It would never really grow past this because it would break off just as fast as it would grow and we understand that taking better care of our hair can mean that we can grow longer hair we are obsessed with our hair's growth we are obsessed with our hair's length and whenever it comes to natural hair that is no different we are obsessed with our natural hair growing we are obsessed with our natural hair becoming long we are obsessed with our natural hair being something that i think inherently plays right back into what society standards are regarding beauty and feminine attractiveness but i think on the other hand there is a reason why we love the length because we find a lot of versatility in length 
length even though sometimes it can be more high maintenance and it can take us longer and it can be frustrating I think length provides us versatility length provides us attention length provides us gratitude I think somewhere in the Bible it talks about how a woman's hair is her crown and her glory and so even in that instance I think our obsession with hair and hair length is so intrinsically connected to who we are as people that we can't help but to want it to grow long and to want it to flourish and I think a lot of what we associate with flourishing with health with good care is length and I think it's a direct display of the work and the effort and the time and the care that you put back into your hair being able to see it grow longer and longer and longer as the years go by and I think that's another reason why people start their lock journeys because it seems to be a lot easier to retain length when you have locks versus when you're a loose natural but I think the same can be said whenever it comes to length across the board in the natural hair community we are obsessed with black girls who have long hair especially if it's a looser texture but I think even more so if it's a kinkier texture because we're trying to figure out in our brains how the heck did they do that and how can I do that too but also we tend to get extremely upset when people cut their long hair off or when stylists go at long hair with shears giving people haircuts and trims that we feel like they don't need or that they shouldn't do and so in a weird way I think we're attached to our hair and we're attached to our hair's length more than anything which continues to feed this monster inside of us telling us that short hair is technically ugly by our definition and by our standard all right guys so that is it for this video I hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead and give it a thumbs up and also if you made it this far in the video go ahead and comment this emoji that way I'll know you made it this far in the video and I will love you forever also comment down below your opinion on texturism on our obsession with length on lip glosses situation whenever it comes to natural hair i would love to hear your opinion also if you have any other topics that you would like for me to make videos on comment that below as well because i would love to know i i want to make the content that you guys want to make and i want to start conversations that interest you and so just stay on the lookout for that and if you haven't already and you like my content you want to see more of my content you want to see more of me and my face go ahead and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you never miss another one of my uploads. Also, if you want to follow my girly content, my more chill, relaxed content, go subscribe to my second channel. That is where I post all my vlogs, natural hair, girl talks, hygiene, fragrance, all of that stuff is all the way over there. And if you want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on all my other social media. Everything will be on the screen and down below for your convenience. Yes, and that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for the love and support that you showed my last video. That was absolutely amazing. I've never experienced anything like that in my entire life and it was great It was great to be able to talk to you guys about everything It was great to be able to put my opinions out there and just kind of see what you guys thought about it And for you guys to be able to add your own things to it as well And so like the response was overwhelmingly positive and I just I love that for you I love that for me and I hope we can continue to hang out So if you want to keep hanging out with me go ahead, you know subscribe 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 come back come back I hope I hope you enjoy what you have been seeing and I hope you enjoy what I'll continue to put out for the rest of the year and yeah thank you guys so much I really really appreciate it don't forget to be the light and I'll see you in my next one bye